All right. So after World War II, we immediately started to see Europe completely divide between um, the democratic West and the communist East. And so Winston Churchill, who was the prime minister for parts of World War II, basically gave this very famous speech called the Iron Curtain speech, where he said that an iron curtain has been drawn from the northern coast to the southern coast of Europe. Now, there wasn't actually an Iron Curtain in Europe, but it was symbolic to showing how these divides were actually happening um, between the East and the West. Now, the fact that he used this metaphor iron shows that this curtain isn't going to be broken down anytime soon. It's heavy, it's permanent, and we're not going to see Europe basically get over its differences anytime soon. So this division between the West and the East, we definitely start using this the phrasing West and East for West to symbolize the democratic capitalist countries allied with the United States and the East to symbolize the communist countries allied with the USSR. So with this prediction, we actually saw it get permanent with Germany. So after World War II, when Germany surrendered, Germany immediately was divided at a very famous conference called the Potsdam Conference. A lot of people say this conference is actually where the Cold War really started. So the Potsdam Conference, the four powers, the U.S., the Great, uh, Great Britain, France, and the Soviet Union, um, basically divided Germany up into four zones. Now, after World War I, Germany was forced to pay money, reduce their military, give up land. Now, Germany has pretty much no control over their own country. These four powers are coming in and dividing the country and then basically controlling their zone. So you can see in this map that we have these four different zones, and the red zone is the USSR zone. But what's interesting about this is see this little area right here. This is Berlin. This is the city that um, is the capital, which has a lot of the economic influence on the country. And notice Berlin is also divided. So not only did they divide the country, they then saw that the East and West and Berlin became the new topic of discussion. Basically, the United States did not like the fact that Berlin was in the Soviet sector. So not only was the country of Germany divided, but we're actually going to see Berlin get divided as well. So the city of Berlin will be divided between east and west. So there's going to be a small portion of Berlin that actually belongs to the west parts of Germany. So that would be like taking Austin, and half of Austin is actually controlled by another country. Now, when this happens, and Germany really has no say over this process, we're going to see lots of tensions actually develop in Berlin. A lot of people are going to leave East Berlin and go to West Berlin, which is eventually going to lead to the Berlin Wall being created. So the Berlin Wall didn't divide Germany. The Berlin Wall just divided the city of Berlin between East and West. And we're going to talk about the construction of the Berlin Wall actually um, in the next units to come because it did not happen until the 1960s. And we're really going to focus on the 40s and 50s in this unit. So to talk about Berlin, um, the fact that Berlin was in the communist region and it got divided really frustrated the Soviet Union. So Stalin wanted to occupy all of Berlin. He wanted the east and the west parts under the Soviet control in the eastern parts of Germany where it was located. And so Stalin trying to take over West Berlin actually created a blockade around the entire city. With this blockade, he shut off every single access to West Berlin. No roads, no trains, nothing. And West Berlin had no food, no medicine. They were basically starved. And Stalin did this to force West Berlin into his control. But the U.S. and their policy of containment 
let not letting communism spread, trying to protect democracy in West Berlin, the U.S. ended up dropping tons of supplies over West Berlin for a total of 10 months. Food, medicine, on Christmas, they even dropped presents for the kids and did not let West Berlin starve. Now, when the U.S. did this for 10 months, I mean, think about the cost of the Berlin airlift. But eventually, Stalin surrendered West Berlin and did not occupy West Berlin. So the fact that the U.S. prevented West Berlin from falling to communism, technically, this is a success to containment. The U.S. prevented the spread of communism. Now, Berlin is the first area where we actually see monetary um, supplies coming from the United States into another country. But we're going to see this also um, into other areas after the Berlin airlift, because now we're going to create an actual alliance. So NATO is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And NATO is a military alliance between the U.S. and the other democratic countries in Western Europe. NATO is still in existence today. We are still part of NATO today. And this was started to basically agree that if any of the countries have any threat or attack, the rest of these countries in NATO will assist. Well, when the U.S. created NATO, the USSR created the Warsaw Pact, which is the exact same thing, um, except it's the allies of the communist countries. So we're basically going to see during the Cold War, everything the U.S. does, the USSR does, and everything the USSR does, the United States does. It's a constant battle between who is the best and who is the strongest. This also was seen um, in other areas that we're going to talk about, um, especially with the fact that both countries are now going to have access to nuclear weapons. Um, our atomic secrets were exposed and were released because of Soviet spies. And immediately, the United States and the USSR both wanted to have the most nuclear weapons. There was a fear that if the other country had more, the other country had more power. Yet we saw what atomic weapons can do after, with the end of World War II, and this arms race got extreme. Let me actually show you. Before, I'll come back to that. This is the amount of nuclear weapons that the U.S. and the USSR had. Um, a physicist actually tried to understand the amount of power this was, and a physicist measured that this would be enough energy to destroy the planet Earth over 300 times. Clearly, we don't need this many weapons, but the fear that the other was going to have more caused us to build up more and more and more. This was also seen with the space race, um, the U.S. and the USSR are going to race to try to get to space. Um, and the Soviets were definitely more advanced than the United States in the space race. Um, so my time is going to cut off in just a second. Let me go ahead and get you to the next slide.